When it comes to planting tomatoes, you can ask a thousand people and you'll get 2,000 different ways of how to plant a tomato. This is how we go about planting our tomatoes. We've prepped the bed, we've worked the bed, weeded the bed, and we've added a lot of organic material to the bed. This is used coffee grounds, this is compost, dry grass clippings, shredded leaves in the fall. We've built up these beds and allowed it to break down over the winter. Now we're gonna come in here when the soil temperature is 55 degrees or warmer. Some people will say 75 degrees is what you want your soil temperature. We've always found 55 minimum, 60 preferably, works very well for the tomatoes. Now you want to harden your tomatoes off, bringing them outside from a grow room or if you've bought them from your local nursery to get them acclimated to the outdoor ambient temperature. Putting them in the shade for a few hours, bring them indoors, and then gradually working them into full sun and keeping them outside overnight. This is not the most a pleasing, eye-pleasing tomato, but we have allowed it to dry out for one main reason. So we can remove it from its container more easily and get it in the hole and then we'll water it and it'll perk back up and it'll be fine. Uh, preparation at planting here, we've taken a post hole digger. You don't need a post hole digger, that's what we're using to get a good deep hole. You can use simply a shovel or a garden trough. We've got the hole deep enough to where the plant will set down in there and be virtually three quarters of the way uh, up the stem covered in soil. Now the reason why this is is all the hair follicles on a tomato plant on the stem when come in contact with soil will produce roots. More roots equal a healthier, happier, and more productive plant. So that's what we've done. Now at the time of planting here, we're gonna add a couple of things to the hole. This is all personal preference, but you wanna do research to find out which may be best for your particular growing area, your garden, based on the soil density and the test that you have found in your growing situation. We're gonna add a little compost to the bottom of the hole. Now, we've removed all the soil that, we're, we, that, the, that was in this hole and put it in this bucket, and we'll utilize some of that around the top here when we get the, the plant in the ground. Now we want to add some bone meal. Bone meal is a good additive, good fertilizer to put at the bottom because bone meal encourages root development and flower production, two crucial things on a tomato plant. You want good root de development as well as you want a lot of flowers which will produce a lot of tomatoes. So we do the recommended applicational rate for that, put that in a hole. We do want to mix it in so it doesn't have direct contact in all one pile of it for the tomato plant. Now, we want to put the tomato in the, want to remove the tomato from its container. Good roots, nothing's root bound. And we want to plant it, place it in the hole. Now you can see ground level, we do have it healed up here in the center, but ground level, you're pretty close to that first set of leaves. Now we will remove these two set of leaves on the plant and you can just pinch them off nothing's gonna hurt the plant. It's not gonna hurt the plant at all. Now we're gonna backfill with compost and a little bit of the soil, the native soil that came out of it. Now in the process of doing this, we do want to add some more fertilizer to this tomato plant in order to encourage and have the best success that it possibly can. And I would recommend adding the fertilizer once you get the hole about halfway filled up. This being if we added the fertilizer like we did with the bone mill, the bone mill, the roots will grow into it and it will kind of stay in that area. I want to add the fertilizer where it's halfway up the hole so as the moisture and rain occurs, it will flush down closer to the actual original root system and it can be picked up and the plant can grow very successfully. So I've just made a, a mixture of fertilizer. We're just going to add the recommended rate on that. Now you can add any type of fertilizer you choose to use, but again, you want to follow the recommended applicational rate on the back of the bag. That's why they have it. Too much can burn the plant, too little will be ineffective for the plant. Also, we want to add just a, about a half of a handful at the time of planting of Epsom salt. Well, we're going to go a full handful here. Epsom salt is magnesium sulfate. It doesn't do anything to the plant necessarily. What it allows the plant to do is pick up the recommended calcium or the calcium that's in the soil to greatly reduce the amount of blossom rot that you will that will occur on your tomato where blossom rot is that beautiful tomato and then you look at the bottom and it's all black and rotten 
This will help the plant pick up the necessary calcium in the soil that will greatly reduce that and uh, you'll have good ripe tomatoes and you won't have any rotten ones. So now I'm going to continue to backfill and then when we get done, we're going to talk a little bit more about plant care for this tomato. Now that we've got it planted, the remaining soil that we had removed from the hole that was in the bucket, I went ahead and put around the top here just so we could get that native soil back in there because there was some additives that I incorporated into the preparations of these beds several weeks ago. An another uh, an original handful of Epsom salt, compost, a little sulfur to bring the pH down just a tad, as well as coffee grounds. So I wanted to bring all that incorporate it back up around the plant. Now we want to get the tomato up off the ground. We want to use a cage. You see a number of different cages around. Some are cheap, some are expensive. You want to look at what works best for you and for your affordability too. We're just going to use a regular three, um, three ring cage here and we want to put it around and this is the time you want to do this because if you, you can use uh, stakes that they swirl around, wind up on, you want to do it at the time of planting so you're not later going in and trying to corral a tomato plant that has gotten way out of control and you're bending and you're breaking off limbs as well as you're puncturing through root development. So we're going to put this around here. In addition to that, we want to have a barrier between the plants and the soil. So it contains bacteria that splashes up on the plant that can create uh, diseases and hamper the production of your tomato plant. Uh, this, being late, uh, this being early blight and some other diseases. So we want to take dry grass clippings, shredded leaves, whatever you have available and put around the base of the tomato plant to greatly reduce the amount of splash up that your tomato plant, that the soil will be on the tomato plant. You could even go one step further if you wanted to and at the time of planting, before we put the mulch around it, put a handful of whole grain yellow cornmeal and that will greatly reduce the, the chances of early blight attacking your plants. You may still get a little bit, but you're going to greatly reduce that amount that you do. So there's a lot of ways to plant tomatoes. This is our way of planting it, and we hope that this has helped you and give you some information that may help your tomato harvest be much more successful than years past.